This is an Asian Human Rights Commission report on the case of VK Suwaranaleka. The alleged incident took place at the Valvonia police station. VK Suwaranaleka was a healthy 30 year old police officer at the Valvonia police station. She left home on the 8th March 1993 to report to work and by noon the next day her family was called to come and collect her body with a message that she had committed suicide. The family was not called to be present at the post-mortem inquiry or even to identify the body. All that was done by the police themselves by the time the body was handed over to the family. The investigating doctor identified the cause of death as cardiorespiratory failure following ingestion of insecticide. He did not send any samples for toxicological analysis. The family was suspicious and went to a nearby magistrate's court to call for the exhumation of the body. The court debated the issue for one year before a new magistrate arrived and made an order for the exhumation. A second doctor issued a report declaring the lack of evidence of insecticide and ordering that parts of the body be sent for toxicological analysis. He deferred his final findings until, until he discussed them with the doctor who made the first inquiry. The government analyst department reported negatively on the presence of any poisonous element. The doctor, however, after talking to the doctor who did the first inquiry, opined that the first report was correct. All three medical reports were sent to the medical college for expert opinion. A professor of forensic science gave his view that the first doctor should have sent the body parts for toxicological analysis and that there was no evidence of death by taking insecticide. On the available evidence, it was not possible to determine whether death was due to suicide, homicide, or natural causes. The debate on the medical reports has gone on for nine years now. It is obvious that this healthy young woman's death was never suspected to be due to natural reasons. If suicide is excluded, the other possibility is homicide. There are many reasons that have made the family believe that this is a case of homicide. The last thing known about the deceased person's whereabouts was a telephone call from the local police station by the assistant superintendent of police, asking her to come to his office with a divided skirt worn by athletes. She obeyed the orders and reported accordingly. Within two hours, she was dead. Within the next two hours, the post-mortem embalming and everything was done without any information being given to the family. The police have not answered the questions of the family about the details of the death and were very hostile. The family has heard conflicting versions about the death from different officers. They believe that high-ranking police officers have made secret inquiries about the death and have hushed up the findings. This is a case where the only persons who know about the death are the police officers of this particular station. The family believes that there were over 40 officers, including women, at the station at the time. Only through rigorous interrogation of the police officers can what really took place be found out. The suicide story, which has been discounted, casts suspicion that has been police complicity. The case should have been referred for inquiry to the CID. However, for over nine years, no inquiry has been undertaken. The family has written to everyone, including the Attorney General and the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka. However, there have been no attempts to assure the family that justice will be done.